Welcome back to Fallout New Vegas. Had to redo talking to House and then talking to Arcade. Please obey all weapon laws. Please enjoy the casinos. Welcome to Vegas. Make your visit a peaceful one. Continuing patrol. Please enjoy the casinos. Self-control is a virtue. Please enjoy the casinos. I think their designs are really cool. Obedience the, is virtuous. Though I gotta say, the single wheel doesn't seem like all that good of a design since it requires a bunch of processing power and whatnot in order to balance the machine in general. No violence is permitted on the strip. Anyways, it wants me to go to Hoover Dam for the house quest, but I will instead just choose Midnight Science Fiction Feature. Investigate the midnight showing at the Mojave Drive-In, which is down here. We are going to be doing the Old World Blues. Like that Red Scorpion wasn't even attacking us, Arcade. Anyways, uh, we're going to be doing the Old World Blues DLC. Where Dead Money had a huge horror slant and Honest Hearts had sort of a religious adventure slant. Old World Blues has a heavily science fiction inspired slant, specifically based off of the sort of cheesy 1950s science fiction movie, like Earth vs. the Flying Saucers or, you know, that sort of stuff. However, it is a midnight feature and the sun is somewhere up there. So we'll have to wait. Some United States satellite it has uh, the old world flag from Fallout. And on the sticks of dynamite they have the regular real life United States flag. Which some people think is a bit of a lore hole and you know it probably is. But it could also probably be justified by saying that I mean here in or the real world, a lot of people still have the confederate flag on different merchandise even though that's that better not be legion that's probably those mole rats even though that's a completely obsolete governmental faction Twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. That seems about right. Just two off. But it's exactly midnight. There's a giant eye on the screen. The crashed satellite seems to be a source of the strange transmission you received. Old World Blues is recommended for experienced couriers, level 15 plus. You have a premonition that while you'll be unable to return to the Mojave until you solve the mysteries of the Big Empty, you will be able to take anything you can carry with you and you will be able to return to the Big Empty anytime after completing Old World Blues. If you're up to a challenge and you have all you want to carry with you, examine the satellite a little closer. The atomic wonders of science awaits. Let me see. Uh, 
I have mostly named weapons in order to get that achievement. I have my sexy sleepwear. And I have my scientist outfit. How many stim packs do I have? Eleven. That should be enough, and I have some food items as well. Alright, I'm ready. You have Lost Arcade's better healing perk because he's a weenie who doesn't like science. In the years before the Great War, Big Mountain had been the home to the brightest minds of the 21st century. Scientists of vision were drawn to the facility to tackle the greatest technological challenges of the era. They sought to create a new world, fueled by technology for the benefit of all mankind. Sonic emitters, space-age alloys, DNA hybridization, force field particle research, autodoc advances in cranial, cardiac, and trauma surgery. The hopes and dreams of a century became realities in the electronic forges of Big Mountain. The nucleus of this research was the dome. A huge stone facility that held the labs of every science known to man. It was a think tank where no problem could not be solved, where no question could not be answered. The Great War brought a new energy to Big Mountain and its scientists. Although sheltered from the front lines, the scientists waged their own war fighting their battles at the atomic level. Equations and calculations marched endlessly across chalkboards and computer terminals toward one solution, winning the war. For years, the minds and computers of Big Mountain were a blaze of trajectories, weapon schematics, and nuclear theories. The problems began to outpace the solutions, First, geometrically, then, exponentially. As the war escalated, so did the questions. On the night of October 23rd, 2077, the scientists received an answer that put all their questions to rest. In the aftermath, Big Mountain's silent experiments went to sleep. Their creators slowly dying in the new world that had been left behind. And the great stone in the middle of the big empty lay untouched, filled with countless technological wonders. Wonders that, in the end, had been answers to the wrong question. You feel strangely heavier. A quick inspection of your body reveals faint surgical scars around your head, chest, and back. And here we are. There's a Sunset Sarsaparilla vending machine. A bench to sit at, and we can see we're not wearing our normal outfit. I don't see any scars on my back, though. No, my back looks the same. So, metal boxes with custom textures. And before us, 
the empty ruins of what was once mankind's crowning achievement in super science, and a rather foreboding red dome up ahead. The Sync Central Intelligence Unit. Personality files damaged or missing. Insert backup holotape to restore files. The disabled jukebox. With the same. At least we have a place to sleep. Some drained microfusion cells. Might as well take those. Some mentats. Mad scientist scrubs. Alright, we have something in addition to our scientist outfit. There's a seat. There we go. A bit dirty, but, you know, nothing a bit of laundry doing can't fix. And besides, you know, I gotta look right to meet the daisins of this place. Looks like an area to grow food in. A hot plate to cook up some ramen steak. Quite a bit of food. And some more drinks. And some ammunition. Guess I can do that. Is there a reload? Oh, there we go, workbench. Make an auto inject stim pack. But I don't think we need that. And the reason I like to grab the, uh, Worn out uh, energy cells and microfusion cells is because I can get a little bit back. Think tank or big mountain? Guess I'm going to think tank. A strange feeling of pacifism, co pacifism comes over you and you find you cannot draw your weapons for some reason. No, I cannot. In fact, I can't even bring up my hand, so we know they're serious. The think tank. I thought I heard the pacification fields kick in. All right, shh. Nobody move. I'll handle this. Be warned, intruder. You are in the presence of a mighty think tank of Big Mountain. The collective geniuses of... We! Why, Oppenheimer, which one of you self-professed geniuses has been adjusting my volume knob? Who was it? Was it you, Eight? Oh, Doctor O, was it? Likely story. O couldn't spark two neurons if they were in a lattice of biomed gel. What? Me? Breaking news, Klein. It wasn't me, all right? I'm the robotical engineer. Eight is sound waves. That's his specialty. You always do this. You always demean me in front of guests. And it's not O, all right? It's... Enough! Either of you do it again, it'll be the last time. Now... Now... Great. Oh, I forgot what I was saying. What was I talking about? So we're introduced to three of them, and if Dr. O sounds familiar. He's voiced by the guy who plays Dr. Venture in the Venture Brothers cartoon. I was at a theater, then I was here. What is this place? Did, did it just say something? Anyone catch that? Boros, you work with animals. Translate. It's a lobotomite! Here, in the dome! 
Oh, as if this situation couldn't get any worse. Now we've got lobotomites! Dalla! Get the spray before it excretes all over everything! Lobotomite? Dr. Klein, if my hypothesis is correct, this lobotomite is the repository of the brain we sent the signal to. The skin envelope once containing it. If so, it's proof that there may indeed be something beyond the crater. Just look at it. The way it blinks. It's like a big, hairless teddy bear. I know what it is, Dollar. I want to know why it's down here. With its... its limbs all over everything. And... are those... Penises I see wriggling on its feet? <laughs> Disgusting. I believe those are toes, Dr. Klein. Little teddy bear toes. Penises are much larger than those tiny extremities. Yeah, not that I would know. I don't recall the human penis ever being that large. <laughs> it depends on one's own frame of reference, Dr. O. Look at its little nose with its two orifices for ingesting oxygen. Noses? By the great static, these lobotomites confound me with their sheer number of useless extremities. Holds up one finger, points at self, points up them, holds up five fingers. Now it's holding up an array of fully erect hand penises. If it tries to insert them, activate vivisectors. Dr. Klein. Wait. I... I don't believe those gestures were random. Random at all. It's been following our conversation. The lobotomite understands us. I agree with Boros's histrionic findings. This little lobotomite is unusually attentive for something whose brain has been extracted. Nonsense! Lobotomites can't comprehend us! Ace, have you been in the men's hats again? If we slow down our oral processor receptors to understand this excretion, we'll all be rendered ignorant. All of you, power down, shut up, and let me prove once and for all how wrong you all are. As usual. Lobotomite, do you understand me? Can you speak? Yes, I'm guessing that crashed satellite was yours. Those were words, weren't they? In the form of questions. It's asking me questions. Is this some kind of trick? Our efforts have turned against us. In plain God, we created a monster. Perhaps as we were ruthlessly lobotomizing it with our cutters, we filled the skin envelope with... awareness. A teddy bear with new stuffing. Wait... If what you're theorizing is this lobotomite understands us, can reason with us... Then this may be just the answer we've been looking for. At last, a chance to... Dr. Klein! A transmission from the Forbidden Zone! Coming right at us! It can only be... If it isn't my old colleagues, the mighty think tank of Big Mountain. Big fools! Oh, It is I, Dr. Mobius, transmitting from my dome-shaped dome in the Forbidden Zone. A zone that is, yes, forbidden to you! Even now, my deadly robo-scorpions swarm across Big Mountain with their pincers and pointy laser tails. Soon, all science will be mine! Even the technology sealed in the Big Mountain Research Centers cannot save you. So cower in your think tank. Wait for the end. That's all. Uh, goodbye. Mobius. Always the same broadcast. He's clearly mad, driven insane by his flawed and imprecise kindergarten-level research methodology. What are we going to do? 
There's no way we can breach the Forbidden Zone. There's those robot scorpions everywhere. The Forbidden Zone, where no brain has ever entered, nor ever returned. Except Dr. Mobius, and the technologies that could save us. They are out of our reach. And Dr. Mobius mocks us. Did you see his cracked monitor? He's clearly let himself go. What? Ask the lobotomy for help? A, I think you need the fluid levels in your logic assist pumps checked. If this lobotomite responded, Dr. Klein, then it is clearly intelligent. Perhaps even displays heretofore unknown levels of helpfulness. But what of its brain? We scooped that out. We don't even know where we left it. And for putting it back in, none of us have the knowledge. Yes, but it's still aware and responsive. Look at it. It's regarding us even now, with its big teddy bear eyes. If we ask it politely, and leave the part about the unnecessary, ruthless lobotomizing out, it might be favorably disposed to us. You removed my brain? We removed your brain, yes. So soft, barely wrinkled, yet so flush with knowledge and experience. Brain extraction technology has been standard practice at Big Mountain for an immeasurable amount of time. Once the brain was out, then came the coils. The Tesla coils. The coils of Nikola Tesla. Brainless perk. Your brain has been replaced with advanced technologies. Your head can no longer be crippled and is resistant to chem addiction. 25% resistance and shock from bodily damage. 5% damage threshold minimum plus one. Yeah, Abe, no need to brag. Wherever your brain is, it's transmitting thoughts to you through the, what, the, um, uh... The Tesla coils in its head. This is fortunate in many respects. If your brain was anywhere in the dome, why, you could access your aggression centers. Circumventing the pacification field, this is a no-no. We have never been in a fight. We do not want that. Reminds me of my days in American High. And Richie Marcus. That doesn't explain the lager sutures on my chest and on my spine. Darla, was it necessary this time? I assume full responsibility. I take my duties in the prodding and excision of living, breathing tissue quite seriously. Although in truth, the autodoc had done most of the work already. Quite industrious, almost cut into all my investigations. Once it had removed the brain and I misplaced it, other organs began to cry for direction, using your nerves as telegraph wires. Rather than let them send their signals, I removed them as well. Shh, little organs. Go to sleep in your tanks. Dala loves you. First was the heart. Heartless perk. The scars on your chest seem to confirm what the think tank is saying. You cannot be poisoned and filters in your artificial blood pump will regulate bleeding and healing. Allowing all healing items, chems, to function at higher levels. Robots are now confused by you and 50% less likely to score a critical hit. Although it's not the heart that regulates poisons, it's the liver, the kidneys, and that stuff. But whatever. Oh wait, I mean, second was the heart. Brain was first. Third was the spine. Spineless perk. Due to complications with the procedure, your spine has been replaced as well. Your to torso can no longer be crippled, and your strength, STR, and damage threshold, DT, have been increased by one. Spine. Totally overrated, that arrangement of vertebrae. Look at me, with my lumbar and thoracic curvature. Never had a use for any of that. Spineless is what I prefer. You took my brain, heart, and spine. 
That auto-dock junk heap was one of Mobius' creations, like the rest of the talking scrap metal in the attic. After that, the brain lost itself. Not in the metaphysical sense. Might have gotten flushed into one of the pipes. Actually, that's pretty likely. If so, it was flushed all the way to Mobius. Foosh! That is the sound of flushing. Why, the Fisher of Rolando, enough of this biological surgery talk. Lobotomite, listen to my voice. It denominates me to ask, but we need your help. In most probable of probabilities, our enemy, Mobius, has your brain. This is not good. He will most likely come after our brains next. We want you to stop him, somehow, with science. You said something about needing technology to stop Mobius? Yes. It is our only chance, a desperate plan that came to us after Mobius' first broadcast. Maybe, just maybe, if we reclaim these buried technologies, we can put an end to Mobius and the horrors spawning from the Forbidden Zone. What exactly is the plan? You're losing me in the generalities. I need specifics. The plan was very complicated. We are still calculating how it would work if it succeeded. That is our part of the plan. Why me? Can't you do it? Um, no. No? Why not? You are equipped to retrieve the technologies with your primitive form. We are not. It's kind of embarrassing. You have hands, and uh, a heartbeat, sort of, and eyes, mostly the hands. There's door handles and lockers and... Enough! We need your help. Will you help us? I'll help. What do you need me to do? Excellent. This is turning out much better than the activate the retreat protocols and cower in my room idea I had earlier. Agreed. Oh, and I've used my robotical knowledge to, um, uh, transmit the radio map waves to... Settle down, Eight. I would have gotten it in a second, all right? Eight's transmitted the last known coordinates of the research centers. They, um, they, well, move sometimes. Or get buried. Or blow up. Eight is correct. All we need are the schematics. This does not mean we do not want the cold hard technology, however. So do not give in to your biological tired laziness and decide you would sweat too much carrying them. You have a new spine. Use it. And even if you die in the act of reclamation, simply reaching them will auto-transmitify the schematics to us. That is still good for us. This whole place sounds dangerous. These devices sound dangerous. Nonsense! This place is no more dangerous than a nuclear detonation site. Our technology is no more lethal than an overcharged Tesla cannon. The technologies are the X2 transmitter antenna array used to focus coherent thought at excessively high frequencies. The psychoanalytic cardiac dampening sneaky stealth suit. A suit like nothing this world has ever heard, seen, or could ever see. And AIDS sonic sound wave emitter projecto gun. Able to broadcast sound at lethal frequencies. It also gives a great bio gel massage. There. We have informed you of all we need. We estimate if you are focused, your time investment will be minimal, uh, by our standards. If you work quickly, you will be the recipient of a gesture of gratitude from us. We do not bestow these old-world gestures lightly. What if I take my time and explore the crater? What illogic is this? Keep your filthy penis-tipped feet out of our labs and secrets! There are things here no lobotomite was meant to see. Things that would astound and possibly terrify. Terrify! 
Yeah, we don't come into your lab and decant your solutions. Only the magnificence of our monitors allow for true comprehension of the wonders of Big Mountain. Shield your jellied eyes lest they burn from your skull. They can... Let's see... Then can you help me get this done as quickly as possible? Sounds like a law of walking. Ah, that is correct. You must walk upon your many penis feet. Much slower than our advanced hovering robotical frames. The little teddy bear could always run right into the pylon perimeter on its thick, turgid feet, returning it to us quickly and rectly, directly. <laughs> pylons? What pylons? The radar fence that surrounds the big mountain crater will prevent, uh, protect you from straying beyond the facility. The mighty radar fence protects us all. Get too close to the blinking posts and the proximity warning shall be your warning. You are too close. If you get near it, your vision will blur as the electrodes in your head shut off one by one. Click, click, click. Possible memory loss will occur, along with long-term nerve degradation. It is tied to not having a brain attached to your nervous system. But the nerve degradation is nothing to worry about. Such degradation would take many lifespans to become evident, and all biology dies. Such tiny inconveniences are less than the greater convenience and conveyance. You see, if rendered unconscious by the pylons, you will be returned to the sink, seemingly instantaneously, by your deadened perceptions. So I can't leave? Oh, uh, Dr. Klein? Dr. Klein? If I may intersect for a moment. What is it? The lobotomite is asking me things, oh, and I'm trying to ignore them. My processors can't ignore you both at the same time. Well, you know how we asked it to fetch the sonic emitter thing? <laughs> Turns out we already have it. <laughs> what are the odds? What is this, a high school science fair? Get your act together. You're making us look like a collection of round earthers. <laughs> You're always yelling. My receptors can't take it anymore. And neither can my feelings. I am yelling because you contaminated specimens can't keep your probes off the volume knob on my voice module! If you have the gun already, I don't understand what you need. It is truly the end of all intelligence when the lobotomite speaks more wisdom than you geniuses. So, if we have the sound wave, sonic projecto thing gun then what in heisenberg's name do we need from x8 anyone i believe we need a new frequency embedded into the gun it was designed to broadcast many sounds once charged we just don't know the frequency and it is lost in x8 just as x8 is forever lost to us the sadness of my high school days. The sadness of my youth. My youth lost. Oh, really, Boros? All you did in high school was call me Fink Tattletale and all the kids you hated. You little teacher's pet brown hound. Give the lobotomite the emitter. Does it have an audio effect frequency loaded? Oh, I don't think so. Wait. What is he doing? I think he's sonjaculating into the gun. Getting it warmed up. Ding. Turkey's done. You give it to the lobotomite. I'm not touching that thing. Oh, I don't think so. I'll do it if you two are going to be ashamed of your own technological needs. Let me give it a little sonic sterilization first. Ooh. All right. All anti 
bacterial fresh. Here, my little teddy bear. I have thoroughly removed all Robco Terminate codes view from the device. It is clean, shiny, and ready for your hands. Energy cells have a high expenditure rate, so extra reserve cells could offset that. Hmm, yes, I believe Watt's electronics tended to make the battery shelf life on the low end. They certainly did. Batteries for my vib vivisectors would always come up short right before climax. I think Watt's manufactured hollow discs, or was it hollow tapes? Never can keep those two straight. Anyway, we're out of small energy cells. Dala. You have some? Why do we... Actually, never mind. I don't even want to know. And no, I don't want to handle your batteries. Just pass them on to the lobotomite yourself. This sonic gun looks like an energy projectile. Got anything that spits lead? What did it say? Spits lead? What, like pencils? Oh, I think it wants a combustion pistol. A gun? Are you mad? We can't give it a gun. Guns kill. Leave big open holes in you that are like sores, but worse. Dr. Eight is correct. We already have given the teddy bear a lethal sonic death ray. Filled with his sonic ejaculate and sterilized by my soft wooing. Giving the teddy bear a gun would be the equivalent of following a glass of hemlock with an Abraxo chaser. Delicious and redundantly deadly. If you're going to bring the Socratic method into it, fine. Give the Lobato bear a combustion gun. Burroughs, don't you have something like that? Are you mad? We can't give it a gun! Guns! Wait, I said that already. Yes, I have the Cyberdog gun. With the little floppy metal ears and the curious nose sensor. Here. Fine. Gun. That gun makes me uncomfortable anyway. Always worried it's going to hump my chassis. Anything else, Lobotomite? Damn it. If there's if there's nothing more, I need to stop Mobius. Fine, so yes. Get these things for us. Do not attempt to comprehend their complicated schematics. That is for us to do. I'll head out then and be back with these things. Well, good. What are the token words spoken in this case? Uh, thank you? Uh, yes. Thank you. Wait, is it leaving? Uh, but, it ought to climb. The lobotomite will need rest, recuperation, things like that. I volunteer my chambers, so it might be stared at. My monitor radar is slowly scanning its form to collect sensitive data. No! That would put it too close to us! It could press buttons, turn lights on and off, and worse, let other lobotomites in! We can give it Mobius' old room. That's where its brain got scooped out anyway. And plus, some of its parts are already there. Might be more comforting for it to hang out with its spine and heart. Home is where the heart is, after all. <laughs> See what I did there? Wet literal. I suppose. We'll have to move that couch out of there. Been putting that off too long. Eight says, let the lobotomite take the Sync Central Intelligence personality chip and reinstall it. That stuffy Mobius program Butler can walk the lobotomite, feed it, barter with it for us. It would also prevent it from going to Higgs Village and taking up residence there with my teddy bears. And it would be nice to have it so close. 
Your logic, combined with my desire to keep the think tank lobotomite free, has swayed me. Here, I present the Sink Central Intelligence. Lobotomite, take this chip to the sink. Plug it in, and make sure the chip is clean, or it could skip. Then make whatever crude biologic demands you need of the sink. It will cater to most of your hormonal whims. This chip looks like it was mass-produced. Are there any other chips? Are there other chips? Are you echoing what he said, or are you asking for real? He's asking, yes. Dr. Klein, there are many other personalities. If you recall, you hurled them off the sink balcony after your argument with Mobius. It is not an argument if one is clearly right and the other is clearly wrong! I remember now. Yes, Lobotomite. There are other chips. If you want, find them. I believe they're stored on holotapes in many of our facilities. But you should stay out of those. No exploring and discovering things. The Sink Central Intelligence should be enough for your... <laughs> needs. If I can trade... wait. I can trade with the Sink Intelligence? Then I'll need something to activate the function, won't I? I cannot dispute your logic. Do we have objects to activate the chip's exchange routines? What, like, stuff? Things? Yes, things. I don't know. Might be some old Nuka-Cola or Sunset Sarsaparilla bottle caps lying around. It's not currency, per se. Still might be enough to trade the sink's trade routines. Mobius put that test line for caps in the code as a debug command, I think. I don't believe that was Mobius's reason. His wild speculation concerning post-Holocaust economic systems was quite extensive, and of high decibel. Enough! Surrender these so-called bottle caps, Nuka and Sunset alike. In their role as things, they will serve as adequate test subjects. All right, all right, here, cap away. Hope that stupid ship chokes on them. This amount clearly represents a deficiency in the amount of caps needed. Again, your logic is unassailable in its simplistic need. Oh? Fine. It's not going to help. That ship will probably refuse them anyway, as stuck up as it is. I hate to come back and ask for more. A little extra would guarantee you're not disturbed. If I were not as intelligent as I am, I would feel as if perhaps I'm being tricked. Impossible. Oh, more. How do you make the lobotomite a bottle cap factory, Klein? Or better yet, give it a ton of things to activate the chip. Ah, dang it. So, just plug it into the circular map thing in the sink upstairs? Wait, alright, having a store available would be helpful. It has a store connection, right? Yes, you may need to wiggle it in a bit, but don't force it. We can't recode them if you break it. There is no more we can do to aid you, and our patience levels are depleted. Now go. Rest in the sink if you must, but leave us to our research. Uh, if you're done, can we move again? My biogel's starting to crampagulate. Of course! Command your science stations! Go! I am surrounded by children. Alright, so only had a bit higher guns and barter. But yeah, that's the opening of Old World Blues, probably the long one of the longest single conversations in the game. I mean, uh Fallout New Vegas, from what I recall, had the largest amount of recorded dialogue of any game when it came out. And I'm pretty sure this DLC is at least half of it. Feet around. But it's been quite a while so I'm gonna cut this episode here. Let it be the introduction and we actually have a chemistry set we can use. And we'll get back to things next episodes. I hope you enjoyed the video. 
that these floating brains gave you something to think about and otherwise entertained you. Have you done all we asked? If not, we will not hesitate to ask again. And uh, take care. Just really like the sort of jazz uh, sound. All we asked. If not, we will not. I just really like the jazz soundtrack that this room has. I have discovered something terrible. The pacification field works on my camera. If it isn't the fascinating little lobotomite. No sexy pictures of brains and floating jars for me. 0 out of 10, awful DLC, fucking apply yourself obsidian, gonna sulk in the corner.